Hello there, welcome to another video from www.viznos.com. In this video I'm going to be talking about the sieve of Erastathenes, named after the Greek mathematician, which is a classic method of finding prime numbers. This particular sieve also has many other features which you can use for teaching other areas around factors and multiples. So we'll talk about that in the video as we proceed. So let's launch the activity, which can be found on the demonstrations page of the site. So here we are faced with a 1 to 100 square and our controls are on the right hand side. So as in all the activities of Viznos, when you move your mouse over a control, you'll see in this top bar a description of what the control does. So this particular control I'm over here um, changes the mode. We'll look at multiples mode first, which is the default mode. Uh, I have red selected. So in multiples mode, when I click a number, the multiples of that number are automatically found. So if I click 5, it goes through the multiples of 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. If I was to click yellow and click 3, we'll have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. You'll notice uh, the next control is split colours. Some of these um, numbers here have two colours. That's because the multiples of 3 and 5 pass through them. So if I, I can turn that off like so. However, leaving this um, split colours on actually provides a lot more information. I'm going to talk about that later, but first let's look at the other modes. Manual mode. So in manual mode, you can pick a colour and you can just move over the grid to colour particular squares. So you might want to point out certain relationships between numbers, or you could run through the sieve itself manually. Um, to get rid of a colour, I should point out, you click this white brush and then click over and drag. The automatic mode, as you might guess, is the whole automatic sieve. So you have to click star for this to begin because the colours have moved away. So it's all automatic. So I'll click start and you'll see in the bar at the top you're getting told what's happening. So 2 is prime, remove its multiples. And if that's a little bit too slow for you, you can speed up using this control. So that's a lot faster. So the next one is 3 is prime, remove its multiples. So as you see, as it moves through the sieve, the primes end up having a border colour, whereas all the solid colours mean that they are composite numbers. And going back to this split colours idea, you'll notice here that 6 has red and yellow as its colours, because that means that the prime factors of 6 are 2 and 3. Moving down and looking at another colour, um, 24, the prime factors of 24, again, 2 and 3. So that's what I'm talking about. This is actually giving you really inf useful information about particular numbers. If you look at 30, it has three different colours. Red, yellow, and, gr and uh, I guess that's lime rather than green. Red, yellow, lime. So red is 2, yellow is 3, and lime is 5. So you can make 30 by multiplying those prime numbers together, 2, 3, and 5. Okay, so with a computer, you don't want to have to be limited to a 1 to 100 square. I can use this control at the top here to change to a smaller square, or in fact to a really large square, which is 30 by 30. So clicking start, and I've got this on the fastest setting, it'll run through and find all the primes between 1 and 900. Okay, well I'll, I'll let you do that in your own time because obviously the program works for that. So it's obviously it's gone through red, then yellow, and it'll go through some uh, kind of greyer colours because you run out of really decent bright ones. Um, some other things you can use the grid for though, um, we can find in the information here various uh, abuses. So here's one, least or lowest common multiple. So let's look at that. I'll um, get rid of this grid. Um, and we'll look for the lowest common multiple of, say, um, 6 and 8. OK, let's give that a try. You need to change this back to multiples mode so the colours appear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on 6. So the multiples of 6 are shown. Pick a different colour, um, 8. Um, so that's the multiples of 6 and 8 are now displayed. And where you have the two colours, red and yellow, this must be a common multiple. So in this case, the common multiples are 24 and 48, and the lowest one is 24. So the least or lowest common multiple of 6 and 8 is 24. So you can pick any numbers, and you can pick more than 2. Okay, so another way you can use this uh, grid, again, it's highlighted in the information, is finding the factors of a number. 
So let's, for example, say that I want to find the factors of 12. So what I do, I could reduce the grid side actually. actually um, okay, so we've got 12 here. Now, if I click on one, this has shown me all the multiples of one. And as you can see, they pass through 12. So because the multiples of one pass through 12, 12 is one of the multiples of one, that must mean that one is a factor of 12. Let's trash that and try with two. Two again passes through 12, so that means that two is a factor of 12. You can do the same with three. Again, three is a factor of 12. Four, factor of 12. Five, now you see it doesn't pass through 12, so in this case, five is not a factor of 12. Six, is a factor of 12, and since you've gone past the halfway, all these other numbers cannot be factors of 12. So the final factor is 12 itself. So I'm going to show you one final thing, which is uh, the visibility tests. So again, this is detailed in the information. So for example, let's um, increase the grid size again. So let's say I want to find out if a number is divisible by 5. So all numbers that are divisible by 5 must be multiples of 5. So highlighting the multiples of 5, we can see all the numbers that are divisible by 5 end in a 5 or a 0. Or let's say I want to do a divisibility test for 2. Let's use yellow this time. So you'll notice all the multiples of 2 must be divisible by 2. And in this case, uh, all of them end in a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, or a 0. So it's a great way to have a look at the visibility tests. You can also do the one for 3, whereas if you add the digits together, and if the digits are divisible by 3, that means it's divisible by 3. So you can look at that, and you can look at others, um, for example, 10. 10, all end in 0. So I've just tried to show you a few different ways of how the sieve can be used for much more than just prime numbers. I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the video and come back and watch some more in the future. Thanks for watching.